Hi, welcome to another video. Generally, the text to application software that we have seen so far can generate applications quite nicely. Although, there's one issue with most of them, and that's the code they generate isn't always reliable. By reliability, I mean whether the code will work correctly on the first run. This is a significant issue with most coding agents we see. For example, with something like Ader, if it generates bad code, you'll need to go back and forth with Ader about what error is happening and everything like that. This becomes a hassle because you can't rely on the generated code unless you have tested it yourself. But what if the coding agent we use can also write the tests for that script, run the tests to check if it works correctly, and if it doesn't, then it can fix that. Well, that's what I have today, and it's MicroAgent. MicroAgent is a coding agent that is different from the conventional coding agent method. Typically, general coding agents generate the code, and it solely depends on the user to check if it works or not. But, MicroAgent first generates the code, then it generates a test for the code. Then the test is run and checked if it passes. If the code passes, then the task is successful. If it doesn't, then the error is given back to the agent, and it fixes the code, which then again goes through the test. This is done recursively until the test cases pass. They say that the idea of MicroAgent is to create a definitive test case that can give clear feedback if the code works as intended or not, and iterate on the code until all test cases pass. It works with OpenAI, Claude, and also allows for changing the OpenAI model endpoint, which allows for usage with Olama and Grok as well. So, I'll be showing you how you can set it up with both OpenAI and Olama. So, let's get started and check it out. Installing it is pretty easy. You can just run this npm install command, and it should get installed. Once it has been installed, you can use the microagent command to use it. But before we do that, we'll need to set up the API key and model. First, I'll show you how to use it with OpenAI, then I'll show Alama. To use it with OpenAI, just run this config set OpenAI key command with your API key. Once done, run this set model command and set the model to GPT-40. Once that's also done, we can use it. To use it, you can navigate to any of your previous projects, or you can create a new directory and use it in that. I'll be using it in a new directory. Once you are in the directory, just run the microagent command. If you run it on an empty directory, it will ask you to create a node project. So, let's make it. Okay, it's now done. Let's run the microagent command again. Now, you can use it. Let's ask it to generate a simple program to add two numbers. When you enter a prompt, it will tell you to put in a name for the file, or if you don't want to put it in, it will also generate a name for the file. You can just hit enter if you want to use the generated name. Now, as you can see, it's getting generated. It first generates the code. Once the code has been generated, it then generates the test, as you can see. Now, the code is generated, and the test is also generated. It's asking if the test it has generated is correct or not. To tell it that the test is correct, you'll need to send the good prompt. Then, it will run the tests and check if it works fine or not, and iterate on it if it doesn't pass the test. Okay, so it has completed the task now. Let's look at the code. Okay, this looks pretty good. The program is correct and should work fine. The test was also created well. So, that's also cool. But, let's also try to make something useful with it. To do that, let's create a next app with the create next app command. Now, let's start the micro agent here. Let's ask it to create a login page, and let's also tell it that it's a next app. Okay, 
It's generating the code, tests, and everything that it does. Let's wait a bit. Okay, so after many trials, the tests do not pass. From what I understand, if the code is generated by AI and can be faulty, then the test generated by AI can also be faulty, and it does not have any way around it. So, if the generated test is faulty, then it will not work. It also doesn't try to fix the test script if the test fails multiple times, which means if the first time the test script is not correct, then it will just be stuck in a loop until it finally exits. Although, the code it generated is still put in the folders. So, you can view it. The page it generated looks like this. It's extremely basic. Looks like I'm in the 90s. But, this is a faulty system design, I believe, because it ultimately comes back full circle to what was the issue with AI-generated code. Anyway, I also tried to create another simple page with just one heading tag, and it failed in its test as well. I don't think it needed a test anyway. So, I think it can be good at functional scripting and stuff like that, which has a final output, but it's not good for anything other than that. Now, let me also tell you how you can set it up with Olama. To do that, first, go to Olama's site. Click on the download button, choose your operating system, and get it installed. Once done, go to the models page and choose DeepSeek Coder V2 model. So, click on it and copy the installation command. Then, paste it in your terminal and get it installed. Once installed, send a message and check if it works. Now, we'll need to change the Alama API base to localhost and port 11434 like this, which will make it point to Alama. Also, change the model to DeepSeek Coder with this command. Once done, you can now use it with Olama. It works fine as well. You can also use it with other OpenAI-compatible AI platforms via this option. Overall, I'd say that it's a good option if you generally do functional programming and if you generally use tests. I don't use tests because I believe you only live once. I directly SSH into the server and directly edit code there. But I think people are using tests these days. So it could be beneficial for those who use them. Meanwhile, I'll keep using Ader. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.